This looks this looks modern day racist. Nazi memes SS, is that what it looks like? SS logo. Trump said that she should go ahead with building the Uyghur Muslim camps in Xinjiang. Xinjiang? I don't know how to pronounce this. Wait, how much does Mike grift? Dude, I can't, oh my God. This guy is, has the fluidity of a fucking glass of water for his political opinions. Trump had used the term little rocket man to criticize the North Korean leader, but subsequently tried to convince Kim that it was a term of affection. <laughs> You're an oh annoying piece God. of shit, and, and, and you spend a hell of a lot of time around these white people trying to make them happy by how much you can. No, say it, dude. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. They're say it, dude. Mr. Say it. People. Say it. That's no, I want to hear you fucking say it, dude. Say it out fucking right. loud right now. Yep. Can you defend your friends, Trey, on Twitter, please? I don't even want to. If you want to remove, like, every black character on every food product that came before 1965, I mean, I just think it's really fucking stupid. I'm not aware. Maybe some people did it. I'm not aware of anybody that saw, like, Aunt Jemima. Oh, yeah. Um, Aunt Jemima uh, is the origination of the uh, mammy caricature that's used to demean uh, female African-American, like, I mean, I, I'm sure the origin... It's probably true. I don't know how many people knew that today or cared about it. It just seems like we're just taking a black mascot off of something. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, I, I guess if they replace it with another black mascot, that's fine. My guess would be that literally I'm a fan of slight rebranding, not completely. Well, but, like, it was rebranded, right? Aunt Jemima was already rebranded in 89 to go away from, like, the really racist stereotype. And now it's just, like, a black woman. Um, now it's just, like, a black woman with, um, with it makes pancakes, I guess. But, um... <clears throat> Um, I, I'm pretty sure that like literally, um, I'm pretty sure that like every single product that we have that has any black person on it ever, if the product is before like 1965, it's probably like, probably has some type of racist origination. That would be my guess. Right. I mean, well, no one knew about the things that perpetuated the systematic systemic racism. So why change it? No one is explicitly acting. Are you, do you really think this is, wait, is Brandon black or white? <laughs> This is some real feel-good white shit going on in here right now. Like, we did it, boys. First, we got rid of Master and Git. Then we got rid of Aunt Jemima's, the... I don't know if they're changing the brand name or not, or if they're just getting rid of the lady, but, man, we're making real strides against systemic racism here. One 1920s mascot at a time, I guess. I don't know. What does that matter? If it's racist in origin, we should still end it? I mean, maybe. I don't know. Not everything that... I mean, like, I think things could be reformed over time and people don't necessarily view it that way. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure there's probably a ton of things that were, like, racist in their origin that over time have been reformed and reintegrated into society in non-racist ways. Who is it hurting getting rid of it? Nobody's hurt getting rid of it. it doesn't. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's just a fucking mascot for a dumb fucking product. No one cares. It just seems like... It just seems like... I don't know. I, I worry that, like... I don't know how worried I am, but like going like going over like board with really dumb shit. Like we're getting rid of like master slave terminology and tech. I think Python already did it two years ago, somebody says. Um getting rid of blacklists and whitelists. Do you think they're gonna change accounting terms? Like, oh cool, the company's in the black. That means it's profitable. Or do you think they keep that around because in the black is good and in the red is bad? I, like, I don't know. It just seems like really weird. I, I mean, I guess it's not a huge deal at the end of the day. It just seems kind of dumb. Slippery slope. I don't know why you're saying slippery slope when 90% of what I just said has already happened. But Is this the banana woman or whatever? <laughs> oh, wait. No, this is something different. Wait. This looks, this looks modern day racist. Aren't these big lips like minstrel caricatures? Is this not? This looks bad right now. This doesn't look like it's been reformed. Oh, but it's in France. These guys don't care about racism anyway. <laughs> hey, fucking got him. I should have had him. I just like... Dan, it's you and me against the world. Okay. I killed one. One is like kind of right here by orange, I think. One is like... Wait, what? what? I don't understand. What's, is this bad? One is like kind of right here by orange, I think. I still don't get this clip. Yeah, wait, I don't get it. Nazi memes SS? Is that what it looks like? SS logo. Uh, okay, I guess. Those were all wrong. That's not it. Nazi. Okay, I don't know what every fucking Nazi SS logo looked like. Hook me up.
Any oh, never mind. Hold on. This is before 1965 is racist because it was created during a time of oppression. Yeah, probably. Duck or C. That's literally what I just said. Oh, wait. Oh, you're saying every brand. Oh, okay. This, this is the one. Just camp in a corner. I'm coming to you. Got one. Got the other. Full tear. Last one right here. Oh, wait. You got to. Did you get. Oh, on you, on you, on top of you, on top of you. All right. Ryan. On, down, down, drop down. Drop down. I'm not a fucking. Wait, what does what does this LSF baiting? Does this I should have asked. seem really late? Like he obviously knows what he's doing. Yeah, it's you and me against the world. Okay. I one. Why is he pretending that he well, doesn't? Like kind of right here by orange. I think. LSF is ruining the internet. I don't. I don't care. This isn't baiting. Does he? I mean, wait. Does he not? What is he doing? He's literally like selecting a certain thing. Dan, he's doing one, world. and then he's doing it right next to the other one, and then he's like, "Oh wait, what have I done? Like, wait, wait, what do you mean? Is it not?" Kind of right here by orange. I think. I don't think so. I don't think he did. Camp in a corner. I'm coming to you. Ooh. That one. I think he realized that after doing it. The other. Last one's right here. Oh wait, you gotta. Did you get? Oh. Is one percent baiting? If you know the streamer, why are people saying that he wasn't baiting? Oh, the great. Okay, I'm gonna go do this dumbass fucking Raj. I can't be Austin show. God, what a dumb channel name. Everything about this is triggering me. Oh, and he's not even fucking live. Are you live yet? Don't mix up Alexandra and Andrea. Which one is the... Every time I look at this stream, it's always the 12... I shouldn't say that. I don't know how old she is. Is she 18? That's mean. It's always the really young one that's streaming. Is this true? Oh, uh, wait, what? Wait, wait, who linked this? You're about to get IP banned if you don't give me another link. Wait, who linked this? T T one zero one. First link on screen. Oh, you're lucky, kid. Trump asked China's she she I think to help him win re-election, according to Bolton Book. Help him win the 2020 years, telling she during a summer summit last year that increased agricultural purchases by Beijing from American farmers would aid his electoral prospects, according to a damning new account of life to the Trump administration by former national... Oh, Bolton released his book. Jesus. He then stunningly turned the conversation to the coming U.S. presidential election, alluding to China's economic capability to affect the ongoing campaigns, pleading with Xi to ensure he'd win. Um, Bolton writes, he stresses he stressed the importance of farmers and increased China and increased Chinese purchases of soybeans and wheat in the electoral outcome. I would print Trump's exact words, but the government's pre-publication review process has decided otherwise. Trump said that she should go ahead with building the Uyghur Muslim camps in Xinjiang. Xinjiang? I don't know how to pronounce this. What Trump thought was exactly the right thing to do. Holy shit. It keeps getting worse? Wait, what? Bolton's 592-page memoir obtained by the Washington Post is the most substantive critical dissection of the president from an administration insider so far coming from a conservative who's worked in Republican administrations for decades and is a longtime contributor to Fox News. Where George Trump is an erratic and stunningly uninformed commander-in-chief and has had a long series of jarring and troubling encounters between the president and his top advisors and foreign leaders. The Justice Department filed a lawsuit Tuesday seeking to block its publication by alleging that it contained classified material woof woof good work bar in one may 2019 phone call for example russian president vladimir putin compared venezuelan opposition leader juan Gu um, guado to 2016 democratic presidential nominee hillary clinton part of what bolton terms a brilliant display of soviet style propaganda to up support for venezuelan leader um nicolas maduro uh putin's claims uh, Bolton writes, largely persuaded Trump. I thought Trump had, I thought Trump was supporting um, Guido for a little bit. Was he not? 
Didn't didn't wasn't the U.S. sort of supporting? They address it. Oh shit. Okay. It may, fuck. I need to do the show soon. Yeah, he was at the State of the Union. I thought they brought him in to undermine um, Maduro. Trump then told Erdogan he would take care of things. He's explaining that the Southern District prosecutors were not his people, but were Obama people, a problem that would be fixed when they were replaced by his people. Said Turkish President Recap Tayyip Erdogan handed Trump a memo claiming innocence for a Turkish firm under investigation by the U.S. Attorney in the Senate. Jesus, for violating Iranian sanctions. They did, but it's all been words. Um, Venezuela dropped out of the news cycle, and Trump hasn't really made it a priority like he should have. Clearly, it was pushed by people like Bolton, but with his departure, it stopped mattering. I thought in, um, I think in Venezuela, I think a majority of the people were opposed to Maduro's rule, but the majority of them also didn't want U.S. intervention to help them like unseat him or whatever. It was my understanding. One of my understandings is that um, one of the problems with the, the way that Venezuela's system works is that their president has a lot of authority to like leverage social programs against the public so that they can pump that shit up like a motherfucker when it comes time for re-election. My, my understanding is one of the problems with their system. Guito? It's Guito? Maduro? You're a fucking statistician! Yay. Yeah. Venezuela is currently hemorrhaging people. There's a refugee crisis going on in all their neighbors at the moment. I mean, Venezuela is pretty fucked. Why though? It's it's why though? It's why though? <laughs> I got a lot of different. Give me a YouTube link. Bolton says he was so alarmed by Trump's administration to do favors for autocrats such as Erdogan and Xi. He scheduled a meeting with the Attorney General William P. Barr in 2019 to discuss presidential behavior. Bolton writes that Barr agreed he also was worried about the appearances created by Trump's behavior in his account. Bolton broadly confirms the outline of the impeachment case laid out by Democratic lawmakers and witnesses in House proceedings earlier this year, writing that Trump was fixed on a bogus claim. Ukraine tried to hurt him and was in thrall uh, to unfounded conspiracy theories pushed by presidential lawyer Rudolph W. Giuliani and others. Bolton writes, always looking to personal instinct and opportunities for reality TV showmanship. Bolton recounts numerous private conversations Trump had with other leaders that revealed the limits of his knowledge. Dude, I knew it. I always said that Trump was a fucking idiot. I knew that. I always knew that. I knew he was so fucking stupid. You guys doubted me. And he was. He's a fucking moron. Fuck you guys. He recalled Trump... He recalls Trump asking Kelly if Finland is part of Russia. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, what the fuck does Finland do up there anyway? They could, Russia could probably take over Finland and no one would know. That's a valid question, okay? <laughs> in a meeting with then-British Prime Minister um, Theresa May in 2018, um, <clears throat> a British official referred to the United Kingdom as a nuclear power, and Trump interjects, oh, are you a nuclear power? Bolton adds that he could tell... The question about Britain, which has long maintained a nuclear arsenal, was not intended as a joke. Russia tried in World War II. It didn't work. We're not talking about World War II, okay? We're talking about modern-day rolling tanks into fucking Georgia. Modern-day powerful Russia. <clears throat> Could go fuck over Finland, okay? No one cares about World War II anymore. That was the Soviet Union. It was a different country. It was a different time. It was a different geopolitical landscape, Okay. Finnish people, stay the fuck mad, all right? That's why NATO exists? Yeah, but barely under Trump, right? Bolton's commentary ranges from expressions of disgust with the president's actions to relief that advisors were able to prevent catastrophe. During a NATO summit in the summer of 2018, Bolton recounts a moment when Trump had decided to inform U.S. allies that the United States was going to withdraw from NATO if allies had substantially increased defense spending by January. We will walk out and not defend those who have not paid, read a message Trump dictated to Bolton. Bolton tried to stop Trump from delivering the threat and became even more alarmed when Trump told him, do you want to do something historic? <laughs> During one trade meeting, Trump grew irate when advisors began discussing Japan and the alliance and began, and began railing about Pearl Harbor, Bolton writes. <laughs> what? Bolton's book is also filled with examples of Trump's closest advisors sharply criticizing the president behind his back, including Pompeo. After Trump completed a phone call with South Korea's president ahead of the 2018 Singapore summit in North Korea, Pompeo and Bolton shared their disdain for the president's handling of the conversation. He writes, Pompeo, having listened in on the call from the Middle East, told Bolton that he was having a cardiac arrest in Saudi Arabia. Wait, how much does Mike grift? Dude, I can't... Oh my God, this guy is, has the fluidity of a fucking glass of water for his political opinions. Talking to white leftists about racism puts me into full-on doomer mode. Class, class, class. Everything is about class. 
Do you think that's one of the reasons why Mike started talking to Bad Bunny? Do you think he just wants to be me? That was really fucking weird. Holy shit. Trump said invading Venezuela would be cool and that the South American nation was really part of the United States. <laughs> Bolton says Trump kept confusing the current and former presidents of Afghanistan while asking Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, Abe um, to help him strike a deal with Iran. And Trump told Xi that Americans were clamoring for him to change constitutional rules to serve more than two terms, according to the book. He also describes a summer 2019 meeting in New Jersey where Trump says journalists should be jailed so that they have to divulge their sources. These people should be executed. They are scumbags, Trump said, according to Bolton's account. Oh, my God. Bolton said Trump said he wanted out of Afghanistan during his second year instead of his third year so he could blame his predecessor for the war. Screaming about the border wall in a meeting with top advisors in 2018, Trump described why illegal immigration had to go down and the wall had to go up, according to Bolton's book. I got elected on this issue, and I'm going to get unelected, Trump said, startling those around him. For all his public bluster, Bolton describes Trump as frequently uncertain, fretful, and wobbly during difficult policy choices. For instance, driven by a desire to please Florida Republicans, Trump talked tough about his desire to oust Maduro um, throughout much of 2018. Ah, this is what we were asking about before. But Bolton portrays Trump as inconsistent and worry-worn when presented with the opportunity to support um, Guaido, Guaido um, who declared himself Venezuela's president in January of 2019. Now, Trump approved of a proposal with, from Bolton to publicly declare the U.S. recognized, um, it, it's right, Guaido? Guaido? Guai, uh, Guai, uh, or is the G really silent? Guaido? Guaido, um, rather than Maduro. And within 30 hours, Trump was already worrying that Guaido appeared weak, a kid compared to tough Maduro, and considering changing course. Um, you couldn't make this up, Bolton writes. At one point, Bolton says he learned that Kushner was going to be calling the finance minister of Turkey because he was also Erdogan's son-in-law. I briefed Pompeo and um, Muchin, Muchin, Mnuchin. Fuck, I forgot. I remember on this new son-in-law channel, and they both exploded. Pompeo. Why do we have so many weird named people in fucking government? This shit, they should not be here. Can we get some? Can we get some Smiths, some Johnsons, Mnuchin? For extended period. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm. I read Pompeo Mnuchin, Mnuchin on this new son-in-law channel. They both exploded. Pompeo was furious, Bolton writes, because there's this one more example of Kushner's doing international negotiations he shouldn't have been doing, along with a never-quite-ready Middle East peace plan. For extended periods of time, Trump kept telling different advisors that they were in charge of border policy, according to Bolton's book. One day in 2018 in the Oval Office, Kelly purportedly learned that Kushner was calling Mexican authorities when he barged into the Oval Office and said so. Why is Jared calling Mexicans, Kelly asked loudly, according to the book, because I asked him to. How else are we going to stop the caravans, Trump responded. In November of 2018, Trump came out of fire for writing an unfettered defense of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, uh, littered with exclamation points, over the killing of post-journalist Jamal Ka um, Khashoggi. Uh, but according to Bolton's book, this was the guy that got chainsawed up, and Jesus, so I guess we just never cared about that. Um, but according to Bolton's book, the main goal of the uh, missive was to take away attention from a story about Ivanka Trump using her personal email for government business. This will divert from Ivanka, Trump said, according to Bolton's book. If I read this statement in person, that will take over the Ivanka thing. He repeatedly describes Trump's lashing out at military leaders, demanding to withdraw troops from the Middle East, from Africa and Europe, too. Oh, it reminds me of the end of, um, was the movie called Downfall? The Hitler one? <laughs> I want to get out of everything, Trump said during a meeting at his Bedminster, New Jersey golf club, according to Bolton, as military leaders pressed him to take more nuanced positions. Nine, nine, nine. Was the movie called Downfall? Hassan is reading this shit through Twitter instead of the article? Well, hey, listen. Amen, dude. As long as the news is digestible in some way for you, that's good. <laughs> Um, he repeatedly tries to learn. You're a fucking statistician. Nice. Pepe laugh in chat if destiny is a dumb fuck. That might be the way to get him to like read full articles. Just transcribe the whole article into a Twitter thread, and then maybe he'll like You're read the article. You're a fucking statistician. Racism <laughs> is kind of weird, champ. Aha. The American name was downfall for the rest of the world. It was Der Un Untergang. Untergang? Untergang? I don't know how to pronounce that shit. At another point, arguing in 2018 with Mattis, Trump told him that Russia should take care of the Islamic State. We're 7,000 miles away, but we're still the target, Trump said, according to the account. They'll come to our shores. 
That's what they all say. It's a horror show. At some point, we've got to get out. To remember the conflict in Afghanistan, Trump said, this was done by a stupid person named You're George a Bush. Statistician. True. Trump repeatedly told Mattis that the defense official had been given a chance, but it failed. I gave you what you asked for. Unlimited authority, no holds barred. You're losing. You're getting your ass kicked. You failed, Trump said. Determined to make friends with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, Trump decided that he wanted to give Kim some American gifts. Gifts that violated U.S. sanctions that eventually had to be waived per Bolton's book. When Bolton recounts the Trump-Kim meeting in Singapore, the first summit of U.S. and North Korean leaders in history, Bolton castigates Trump's diplomatic efforts, saying the president cared little for the details of the denuclearization effort and saw it merely as an exercise in publicity. He describes it extensively, including what Kim and his advisors say, and what Trump and his advisors say in return, giving a fly-on-the-wall account of a historic event. Trump told me he was prepared to sign a substance-free communic... communic? have his press conference to declare victory and then get out of town. In the months following the summit, Bolton described Trump's inordinate interest in Pompeo delivering an autographed copy of Elton John's Rocket Man on CD to Kim during Pompeo's follow-on visit to North Korea. Communique? Trump had used the term Little Rocket Man to criticize the North Korean leader, but subsequently tried to convince Kim that it was a term of affection. <laughs> Trump didn't seem to realize that Pompeo hadn't actually seen Kim Jong-un during the trip, asking if Pompeo had handed the CD. Ro Bolton, Pompeo had not. Getting the CD to Kim remained a high priority for several months. Oh. Real quick before I host the show. This. I Sometimes I go back and I rewatch scenes from these movies because I can't believe how bad they were. I can't believe they were just horrible movies. Everything was bad. The dialogue, the shots are weird. Literally every single thing is CGI. Like, everything is so weird. Okay, listen to this. This is like a very minor nitpick. I just thought it was incredibly stupid. Are you sure you have the right coordinates? According to my information, it should appear in this quadrant here, just south of the Rishi Maze. How can you... What does northeast and south mean? <laughs> <laughs> on a fucking map of like a fucking galaxy. Wait, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm sorry. There are like so many small, like stupid and big is... stupid things about like all of this shit. Oh my god. Oh, what was anybody thinking? I don't know. Christ. What the fuck are these guys doing? Wait, wait. Um, let's chase. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Wait. Yeah, he's parachuting. What the fuck? No, he's like attached to the helicopter. No, he's not. He's Look. parachuting. He's parachuting. Oh. I'm not in here. Wait, what? Wait, what just happened right there? Yeah, it's like a glitch. He's... All right. The fuck? Can you use um? Wait, can you use a UAV? Bring the UAV over here. Okay, never mind. That guy is either hacking or. <laughs> I do not know. How does it feel to get cucked by Fed? Honest to God, dude, my heart is broken and you've exposed a deep insecurity that I have when I lose Raj Dave shows. So congratulations, dude, you got You're me. A fucking statistician. Pierce the armor. Hey, Steve. Hey. I actually truly feel that way, but I'm only hiding behind one layer of irony. But even though I do feel that way, I know that if I joke about it, people won't take me seriously. Or that's actually a fourth level irony joke, and I'm actually just being ironic about being ironic, knowing that you'll think I'm being ironic about being ironic. An idiot, dude. You're oh an annoying God. piece of oh, shit. I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. And you spend a hell of a lot of time around these white people trying to make them happy by how much you can. No, say it, dude. No, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. They're say it, dude. Mr. Say it. Say it. That's no, I want to hear you fucking wrong. say it, dude. Say it out say fucking it. loud right now. I say know it. what you're say getting it. at. You know exactly what the fuck you're getting at. I want to hear you fucking say it, dude. No, you know I can't see any. You see one of those bring everyone back contracts? No, no, it's because we're on a contract now. You gotta finish it. Oh. Exactly what the fuck you're gonna say. You know exactly what the fuck you're gonna say. Say it out loud. Go ahead, dude. Yeah, I'm sure you fucking did, dude. I know exactly what the fuck you're alluding to. And on their behalf, you discipline other black people. You yeah, to no, sure. sit, no, go ahead. You keep to giving sure yourself that, that fucking hole, dude. And the ideas that we... Just tell me I'm an idiot, dude. Jesus.
Yeah, okay, I'm sure, dude. Okay, you're not implying here, anything, here, dude. You're just here, asking here. questions, man. You're just it's fucking asking exactly questions. You're just making statements, dude. Else yeah, I'm sure, dude. From that yeah, yeah, I'm thing. sure, dude. If I just walk up to you and I say, hey, you know what, man? You're working with a lot of white people. It's a little suspicious the white people you're around. It seems like, I don't know, dude. I don't know. You were on Assange's podcast. It seems like you were bending to his will pretty hard. It seems like you're really going antithetical towards black liberation sentiment. It's a little weird that you're doing this. You know for a fact I'm implying something. You're just too much of a yeah. fucking coward to say it out loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it's the okay. end of the fucking day, dude. No you're just too no, you're just too much of a fucking coward, dude. You can't repeat my own words back. You have to make up a bunch of No, that's literally what you said. That's actually what you said. And that's fine. That's the kind of person that you are because you need to make this for them to be able to pick up and talk about it later. And that's fine. I get it. You're just somebody right. who's just yeah. too slimy, dude. You're just somebody right. who's incredibly fucking slimy. No, no, you got no fucking exactly. spine. Just, you don't know. No, the problem is you're really good at gaslighting people and you're really good at playing around TOS. Exactly you just I'm don't saying. want to say it out loud, but you're willing to imply it. No, it, it, there are things that I will say out loud in front of other people that will raise eyebrows and get people to suck like suck air through their teeth. I say shit that makes people upset all the time. I, like, I completely own that, okay? What, what I wanted to say to you was exactly what I said to you. And anything that <laughs> you want to extrapolate, that's entirely your Melee, I'm down. Get a jump in melee. I'll just, Don't you know, just fuck just this game, dude. I'm done. Like, this is so fucking no, no, stupid. <laughs> Is literal a uh, synonym for race traitor? I know it is. I know it is, but I wanted him to say it because I heard him saying it several times. The guy is just a piece of shit. Listen up, soldier. Winning. waiting for you. I don't know. It's, it's cringe, dude. It's just fucking cringe, dude. You're up, soldier. Now go sort this fucker out. Um. Oh, oh, what the? Okay, where are we going? Oh. Um, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, hold on, give me a second. Right there. Yeah, I'll talk for a minute, Destiny. You can just hop in the chat. We're not gonna make that. Hop into whatever chain. You can just hop right into my chain. Um, I'm gonna make it. I don't know about you. Same old tricks. Uh, where did Vivian come from? I moved into a different channel, but um, I'm back in the uh, back in my. Let me finish this match. Back I wanted to keep going because I wanted to hear what he had to say about the shit, but he said it out loud. Like there was no, there was no point. It, it, just getting a single question off was fucking impossible. Getting a single fucking hey, can question. I show off. There? Yeah, you can. Getting a single fucking question off was fucking impossible. Like, it was pulling teeth just trying to get that one question off. I wanted to ask him further questions. Really his excuse for how he acted on the N-Word Andy debate, right? Yeah. Is the, that he was emotionally involved in it. Like, that yeah. is true. I forgot about that. My Discord, not yours. Yeah. How you doing, Destiny? Hey, what's up? Um, two, um, two rhetorical strategies that are very helpful um, for conversations like that. Number one, it sounds really stupid. But asking questions to force somebody to answer a question is like super, super, super effective. So like when you, um, so in, in a conversation like that, this is so hard to do on the fly. And I know it sounds dumb that I'm like saying this because obviously I can look at it in retrospect. But if you ask somebody like, what's the difference between what you're calling me and an Uncle Tom, if you make him like try to spell that out, if he can't do it, then like that's like the way to get people in conversations like that. Usually what I, you- I should have- Mm -hmm. sure, sure, I should have tried that, but the, mm -hmm. the original time that I tried to ask him a simple question mm -hmm. about, uh, I'm not sure when you jumped in, he literally just didn't answer it for like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It was impossible to get him. So I asked him, like, what does he think? I, I thought he didn't believe that white people could be allies. He said he didn't believe in the concept of allyship. And I said, okay, so you don't believe that white people can be allies because you don't believe that, like, that's the logic. And then he said no. And then I tried to literally ask him, if you don't like I tried to ask him a question for like 20 minutes and he just didn't answer but yeah I guess mm -hmm. I should have tried yeah it's really frustrating and it seems weak but rhetorically the the effective strategy is to like let him go and then when he's gonna be like okay um so can you tell me what the difference is between this and that 
like and then if he keeps going like okay i understand can you tell me what the difference is between this like just say okay and repeat the question it's like it seems dumb but it's super rhetorically effective and it'll make him look bad like you can't answer the question but like with people like that that's all you can do because obviously he doesn't want to answer any of your questions because he's like he's kind of like um like an oblivion like dialogue tree where they only want to go down like the road that they've already kind of walked so mm -hmm. you know you have to just keep asking over and over and over again uh, well, well, fucking, yeah, I guess so. I, I don't know. I I don't know, dude. I, I just got, I don't know. I guess that I just, uh, I didn't think of that, and I probably should have thought to do that, but mm -hmm. such an unfortunate situation. Yeah, it's hard. So, I, I just, I was really fucking, I don't know, I got really fucking tired of him just talking over me and shit like that, and I got really fucking annoying to have to deal with, but... Mm -hmm. People it like him excel in envi environments where basically they can just kind of preach. They don't really do conversations. So the only way you can kind of win is like through r basically rhetorical strategy. You're never going to have a real conversation with somebody that's as like bullheaded as that. They just want to say what they want to say and they don't really want to respond to anything. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's safe to um, like, I I don't know. I don't think anybody could interpret that as not what it was. Like we, we know what he wanted to say. Like explicitly, we know what he was saying explicitly. Oh, yeah. So like, I I just don't like. I don't know why I would. I don't I don't know why I would tolerate people like this and have like people think that I should tolerate people like this or or people that think that this kind of messaging or rhetoric is okay mm -hmm. to espouse. And I am getting a lot of people that want me to have to wanting me to tolerate this kind of shit, and it's really just fucking cringing me out. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on ultimately what your goal is at the end of the day. If you want to forge as many relationships as possible to keep as many doors open as possible, to open as many potential conversations as possible, then obviously you're going to have to tolerate more than you want. Um, if your goal is to go nuclear and say, fuck everybody, you can be like me, but then you don't have any friends, and then you lose access to a whole bunch of stuff. I can get away with it because I've got a really large audience, but that can be really brutal if you're trying to like build out connections and stuff because then you just kind of get completely fucked. Yeah, I'm just... Especially because if it's a larger person, they can start blacklisting you. Like saying like, yeah. oh, don't talk to that guy. I like that guy's fucked or that guy's whatever. Yeah, Yeah. so I, I, I don't know. I just, I need to, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just think that ultimately I'm just not going to, not going to have conversations with people from that sphere. Mm -hmm. And then just, I guess, keep doing what I'm doing, which is just bring to light their problematic shit and stuff like that. And try and get that fucking done. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I wasn't expecting him to have a conversation with me. Um, and I guess I didn't really get a conversation now, did I? I just really got him talking shit. And that, was, that was really all that was. And trying to gaslight me and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was... I don't know if you... It's, people call it the N-word manifesto, but if you ever read that big Reddit post I did, like you can kind of see how much he like tries to rewrite history. Yeah. Like Even that's an yeah. hour old. Yeah, that guy yeah, is literally... insane. Like, that guy's, like, on another... Like, that. people like him genuinely make me wonder if there are people that live on, like, other levels of, like, cognitive thought because he just is absolutely fucking crazy. I don't I don't understand. Um, or at least he's beyond my comprehension in terms of just rewriting things that have happened. I don't know how he sees the world or how he sees anything. He's really good. Yeah, he, he was really... He's trying his absolute best to gaslight me in that conversation. He was trying really fucking hard. And... Uh, and I, I did have to reference uh, the links from, like, the manifesto to be able to corroborate some of my statements. But, I mean, I know for a fact he's not going to look at them. I no, of course, yeah, no. The pro one, one problem that you have, this is, like, a really frustrating reality of this type of conversation, is that if you approach things in good faith against somebody that's working in bad faith, you will always lose that conversation rhetorically, and you will always walk away more frustrated. Um, just being able to, yeah. like, tell a bold-faced lie and to not care about, like, what actually happened is such an advantage. You know, um, there's a, actually, there's a really good quote. Um, it's literally the reason why we're talking about white supremacists is because of the 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 probability of them being bad faith it's like and, and the fact that i have such a hard time dealing with bad faith actors is the reason why i don't talk to those people mm -hmm. oh yeah this is the is it sarter i never know what i'm gonna say this quote or whatever 
Um, it has to do with um, Nazis, basically, but never believe that anti-Semites are completely unaware of the absurdity of their replies. They know that their remarks are frivolous, open to challenge, but they are amusing themselves, for it is their adversary who is obliged to use words responsibly, since he believes in words. The anti-Semites have the right to, sorry, have the right to play. They even like to play with discourse, for, by giving ridiculous reasons, they discredit the seriousness of their interlocutors. They delight in acting in bad faith, since they seek not to persuade by sound argument, but to intimidate and disconcert. If you press them too closely, they will abruptly fall silent, loftily indicating by some phrase that the time for argument has passed. Basically, if you're arguing with somebody that's like very bad faith, like it's, it's fun for them to move from topic to topic and not care about whatever happened with anything. And then you're left like trying to play this game where, where you're trying to win an argument playing by some rule book of like being reasonable and they don't care at all about that. They just want to like make their points and leave. They don't care about anything. Yep. Yeah. I just, uh, I, I don't know. There's a reason why I, I just didn't, I never wanted to engage with people in that kind of rhetoric or, or who are using bad faith arguments. And mm -hmm. it's because I recognize that I, I'm personally not good at it. I, I can't, uh, I have to argue with somebody in good faith. Otherwise, like, I'm just, I have no practice arguing with people in bad faith. And it's fucking difficult as shit to do. It's a different demon altogether. So. I mm -hmm. just don't, I typically don't do it. I just didn't think he would be entirely bad faith. I thought there would be some kind of questions that I could ask in some way, and then it just, it turned, it devolved. How much did you see, uh, Mind Whiffs? All, um, All of it. Well, I don't know how far, well, I think I tuned in towards the beginning, yeah. I don't know. I saw at least an hour of it, I think. Right. So. Yeah, I was just trying to, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't even know how... I don't know what uh, situation you came in from, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm probably just not gonna... Yeah, I just can't engage with those people. That's just... All that shit is ultimately... I think ultimately as well. Um, I'm just trying to decide whether or not I should even care about engaging with people in a sphere, sphere of influence or not, or people that are like close with them. Like, well, it depends on the, the how close they are with them. If you want, in my opinion, and where I kind of stand on this, is that I think that there are a lot of people that he associates with um, that are uh, influenced by him, but still, like, I, I don't know, like, can be convinced, right? Like, like I think Andre is, like, sympathetic towards a lot of the shit that Quarantine says, but I still think that Andre can be, you know, like, de Wait, holy say, shit, am like, I, is my mind fucked? Wait, are, I thought Andre and Quarantine were the same person. No, oh, sorry. There's another Andre. A A4 Andre is another another dude that kind of like hangs out with. Him, oh, so. wait. Who did you, did you just talk to? Quarantine or Andre? Yes, Quarantine. Yeah. Okay. Quarantine. I thought so. Yeah. Just making sure. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. But there's another Andre. Another another Andre. Yeah. There's another Andre. Uh, he runs podcasts and shit. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just saying that like people like that, I don't think that you should throw to the wayside because I don't think that that that's useful either, right? Like, um. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that like full throatedly like defend Quarantine, and I think that you should definitely like write those people off. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know, dude. It sucks. It's, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. a crazy You want to not hate people, right? But it makes it impossible. Yeah. It really does. It really does. Um, I, uh, so yeah, okay. Uh, with that being said, I guess that, that, that is just what it is. I, it, it was kind of, I guess it's kind of a little bit of closure that, uh, I heard him say that what everybody thought he was implying anyway um yeah. so th I, we had that little bit of closure um i guess i'll fucking save the vod or some shit so that way if he ever what did you bring him in chat about I, somebody else brought him in somebody asked me if i wanted to have a conversation with him and i said yeah because i wanted to, to talk about some of the things that some of his rhetoric and like uh, some of his beliefs like i was really curious what he thought was required to be black because of some of the essentialist arguments he was making um i was very curious as to where he what his position on was uh, or what his position was with white people because he seemed kind of like potentially verging on the idea that like white people as a group of people were inferior um so i wanted to have a conversation with him about it is he like, like on that. some like nation of islam shit or what he, I, yeah, he, he I could send you some material on it. Yeah. What's his Twitter like shit that he spouses? I think it's just Andre Demise, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Twitter account. I don't remember. Andre Demise, yeah. 
he constantly refers to like this um, book called Urugu, which basically seeks to essentialize um, white people as all having like sort of like this white logic and it essentializes them down to like being inherently like a result of incest and like f flawed in a number of different ways inherently. It's pretty yikes. I would honestly, I would just refer to his tweets to figure out what he believes. I don't think he reads half the shit he says he does. He doesn't come off that way. I'm not joking. <laughs> Well, he unfortunately deleted them now, but he used to have a bunch of tweets referring to people as like Yurugus and, and Yukubians and shit. So, yeah, I, I remember after the whole inward Andy shit, he like deleted a shit ton of his tweets though. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I remember, I remember he had a post on that, but yeah. I, I don't know if those are logged or what have you. Yeah, so mainly I just wanted to get... I wanted to have conversations about rhetoric like that because I think that's just stupid, harmful, and has no real place anywhere because, like, why the fuck would you be doing this? It's really cringe. And uh, I've been having trying to have conversations with other people as well because there's been another person as well that's pretty close to, to him that have been spreading information that seems to allude to the idea that white people should kill themselves. So I was, like trying to make sure that like I, like i don't know i was just trying to have conversations with these people but they n none of them want to mm -hmm. so i mean at the end yeah, of the day it's all just some larping circle jerky shit probably for a lot of these guys yeah it's just really frustrating not being able to uh hold them accountable able to, yeah hold them accountable and e even potentially seeing some people be sympathetic to their idea but not know like some of the extremes right. like e even in the past like week meeting several people or sending several people the articles that these people are, are, are linking to other people and like what it says in those those pieces of information or mm -hmm. those uh, documents is pretty yikes stuff and i don't know one of the other things that's like really helpful for people like this is um uh this is really good for white nationalists too is asking them for policy suggestions because um, people will talk about how this is fucked, this is evil, this is horrible, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, well, what should we do? What do you think we should do about it? What should we do about this thing? So a lot of people will falter there because they're so heavily engaged with their fantastical delusions. They don't actually have any prescriptions for, like, real-world activity, which is interesting. Yeah. Well. Striker yeah, and um, I... Enoch both fucked that up hard in my conversation. I'm yes, okay, well, how do we do this? Well, how do you want to make, like, a white nation? What should we do? They, they usually will admit, like, very quickly, like, well, it's not possible now because the fucking the Jews run everything. It's like, okay, well, then what the fuck is the point of anything you're doing? Like, if nothing good can come from your conversations. Like... Yeah, I think that is mainly the, the issue that came about is that, like, I remember when I was watching your shit like that, I was constantly referencing the fact that, like, I just, I'm not cut out for that. Like, I recognize my, my mm -hmm. personal intellectual limits. I'm not made to do that. I'm just not somebody, like, the way that I think, the way that I work, I'm not, I can't operate. And, like, if somebody literally tells me a bold-faced lie and, like, tries to, like, gaslight me in a very bold-faced way, mm -hmm. I've too hard of a, it's, like, too difficult for me to not just be, like, you're wrong and then, and then and, like, go from there or, like, something like that. Like, I need to see the exact evidence in the exact way and shit like that. It's it's not it's not good. Uh, sure. I can't debate bad faith people. It's just not something I can do. Yeah, I understand. So, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, that's what it, what it really ultimately came down to. I should have I should have asked him those questions and shit like that, but I think more, more or less, and if I'm in that conversation, conversations like that that are deemed bad faith, I'd probably just need to get out. Mm -hmm. There's just nothing I can really do. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll leave it to I'll leave it to the people that can do it because fuck it, I can't. I uh, but I guess uh, I guess uh, what what are you what have you been up to, Destin? I'm playing Call of Duty, and somebody linked me a clip of you shouting at that Andre guy. I love that dude. That guy I'll never talk to him again, but he's really funny to listen to. He says tweets a lot of funny shit too. I think it's really good. I think it shows a lot of progress that not only can I have white socialist LARPers on Twitter, but we have black socialist LARPers as well. So I think that's good. Everybody needs their The home. left really is diverse, you know? Yeah, yeah they are. they're <laughs> Holy Too bad the, uh, the white leftists on Twitter don't see race, and the white uh, or the black leftists on Twitter apparently are like fucking race, racial supremacists, so I guess they'll never get along. Rip. The left I mean, infighting come again to destroy socialism. I would say that, like, don't think that this conversation was fruitless. I mean, I think you made him go pretty hard, like, mask off, even though he didn't explicitly say it. And I think that you should take that and, like, run with it. Because um, that's, like, a pretty... That's a pretty big W, in my opinion. Yeah, perhaps. I just, like... 
I think I, I, I'm really on the wavelength where I just need to... I don't know. Like, yeah, that 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 is great, but I, I don't feel like... Like, I feel like I failed so on so many in so many places with my arguments in, like, my argumentative style just since it can't accommodate for that kind of bad faith acting that I just... Mm. It just doesn't. I just. I really don't like it. Like honestly, that depresses yeah. me the most. I, I. I more or less already knew. Like I think more or less everybody knew that that's what he wanted. He what he was alluding to before and what he wanted to say. Yeah. I think uh, so. Like I knew going in, he was gonna fucking try and do that. I just don't think he realizes the effect that he has. That in like other people in discords will call me the c word and shit like that. Well, I just that, don't think uh, he cares. I think, yeah, he, maybe, I think maybe he thinks he you deserve it, but I don't yeah, know, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, you're probably right, actually, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. So, yeah. I, well, because he constantly complains about how other communities engage with him in, like, like harassment sort of way, like, uh, or ways that, like, take the, the form of harassment and, like, complains about that, right? But when he's the one perpe uh, like, like, um, perpetrating,